the telencephalon gives rise to the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the wiggly part of your brain that you can see, and there are two hemispheres of the cerebrum. So you can see that in this visual, this is anterior. If you're looking down at the brain, this is like the superior surface of the brain that we can actually see because we're looking down. It's like you cut somebody's skull and opened it up and looked in, and that's what we are looking at right here. Um, you'll notice that the two halves of the cerebrum are separated by an actual line. Like they're literally separate anatomical structures. So we have the left, left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. They're connected to each other. If we did take a slice down the middle and we made a mid-sagittal cut, split our brain in half, there is a structure right here that connects the left and right hemispheres, and it's called the corpus callosum. Corpus callosum. The corpus callosum allows communication between the left and the right hemispheres of the cerebrum. The cerebrum also consists of lobes, and the lobes are, you can actually see three of them from this superior view. We have conveniently, and you, you probably are a little bit comfortable with this already because we did a little bit of this with the bone lab way back in the day. We have the frontal lobe. We have the parietal lobe. And we have the occipital lobe. And these are all visible from the superior surface. I'm going to talk about each of those lobes using a different picture. We're going to look at this picture because this is, again, looking, we're only seeing one side, but we still have our anterior and posterior views. And now we can see these, um, these lobes a little bit more clearly. So what lobe is this on the anterior surface? This is the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is basically the site of your personality. There are a couple of uh, additional things that we're going to look at for what the frontal lobe does. We're going to look at that in the next little mini lecture. But essentially, we're talking about who you are and, and how you see the world and your general, uh, well, your personality, which is wild when you think about the fact that you don't think about your personality as a, a function of your brain. I think of it like that's just who I am. But no, it's actually your frontal lobe. And you can scramble somebody's frontal lobe and you can change their personality. It was the act of scrambling different parts of people's brains and then watching what happened to them after they got scrambled that helped the uh, scientific community figure out what your brain does. I think it's really interesting and probably a good time to make a little segue. Just like, I don't know, back in the day, they decided, the scientific community decided to invest a great deal of money and resources in decoding the human genome. We wanted to know every single gene that we have and the sequences of DNA and what's possible. And that has given rise to a, an enormous amount of innovation and, and learning, which of course makes complete sense. Well, now there's a brain initiative that is, the goal is to decode and figure out how your brain works, which again, I mean, it's kind of exciting when you think about, you know, we kind of go, oh yeah, we know everything. Look at anatomy. Here we are having to like memorize all these parts, but we really don't know very much, especially about our incredibly complicated brains. So there's a lot of money being invested right now to help us figure out all the nuances, all, like what does this specific part of our brain do? We're comfortable in this class going, oh, the frontal lobe is about personality. That, that's cool. That's a nice simplification. There's a billion other things that are going on there, but we're cool with uh, just keeping it a little bit simple. If you look at the temporal lobe right here, this is temporal. 
The temporal lobe is involved in hearing. That one's easy to remember because it's close to your ear, but it's also involved in smell. Um, the occipital lobe is this posterior lobe of your brain. The occipital lobe is uh, vision, sight. This is where um, conscious vision is processed. The entire cerebrum, let's make a note of that. The entire cerebrum is conscious. And I say that with a little bit of, uh, of course, what is conscious? What exactly does that mean? For the most part, we accept that if something is conscious, we can be aware of thinking about it. So if you see something and you are aware of what you saw, it's not just, you know, light waves going in and not being processed. If you actually are aware of what you're seeing, then we consider that to be conscious. And the analysis or the, the, the examination of what those light waves actually mean, that's taken care of in the occipital lobe. The smells that come in, the chemicals that come into your nose and trigger the information going to your um, temporal lobe, that's for conscious awareness of smell. The parietal lobe is this top guy right here. And the parietal lobe is primarily uh, general senses. And, you know, again, general senses like pressure, touch, heat, cold, not special senses such as hearing, smell, sight. Those are my special senses. We actually have special sensory structures, organs, that are responsible for bringing in that information. The parietal lobe takes care of, of kind of a more general sensory input. A lot of that, a lot of the receptors there are in your skin. One more. There's one more lobe that you actually can't see from here because it's deep. One of the cool things about the cerebrum is that most of it is superficial, so we can actually see the lobes that we're looking at. But the piece that's deep, check this guy out. Here is my frontal lobe. Here is my parietal lobe, occipital, temporal. And if you spread the temporal lobes apart, the temporal lobe separated out from the frontal lobe, there's another structure deep in there, but it is cerebrum. It did come from the, the telencephalon, and that is called the insula. And the insula is involved in taste. The insula, um, your deep cerebral structures are involved in memory. And there's this whole section of um, your brain that is involved in memory and learning, which is extremely relevant and beyond the scope of what we're going to do. What else do you need to know about our little um, I think we're good. So let's look at two specific areas in our cerebrum. One is part of the frontal lobe, one is part of the parietal lobe, and we'll take a closer look at what those specific areas do.